pong, the final tape on ping pong. Uh, in this one, we're going to worry about the paddles. So let's take a look. Well, of course, the paddles and the score. Uh, we need to worry about making the paddles reflect the ball. In the last one, we actually got the paddles on the screen and we got it moving. In this case, we need to get the paddles so they re it reflects the ball, so the ball bounces off the paddles. And um, we need to also put some scoring mechanism into this little program, something to keep score. And the easiest place to do that is when the ball reverses from left to right. If the ball gets past a paddle, that's a score. So that's the that's what we're going to do basically. That's the way we're going to start this. Um, first, we need to take a closer look at those paddles and understand a few things about those paddles. With the paddle, it has a very thin line here. It's uh, just a few pixels across. And I'll just draw a little bit down the bottom. See, so just a very few pixels across. Now, when a ball comes at the paddle, you know it it doesn't come in a smooth line, hitting each point as it comes. It jumps, and it'll hit here, okay. And then the next point might be three away. It might hit here, okay, and here. I can't remember what I set the ball to exactly, but you've got these little sort of bounces that it does. If we just had the black line, it would be possible for the paddle for the ball to come up here just like I'm doing now and hit here and then hit here and then the next one maybe would be across the paddle. It would not bounce off the paddle. It would appear to go through the paddle. What we need to do is create a region around the paddle in which if the ball ever lands in that region it'll change direction and go out of the region. Okay, So keeping that in mind, uh, we want to put a, a kind of a buffer zone so the, pad, so the ball can't just bounce over the paddle and, and therefore appear to go through it. That it will have to hit within this region and once it's within this region we change the direction of uh, the X direction, not the Y direction. And that makes it look like a natural bounce off the panel. So I've created a region here, and I've used five units on each side. Um, that might be a little too big. Four might work better. Because if the region's too big, the ball can come up from the bottom, you see, get inside this region, uh, change direction, bounce, but the next bounce be still in the region, and then change direction again, the next bounce is still be in the region. So you'd be, you'll see it just kind of get stuck in here occasionally, and it'll just kind of bounce up like that in through the paddle. And it looks like it's just gliding along one side of the paddle or the other because the bounces are so small. So we've got to make sure that that region isn't too big but big enough so that the ball when it comes at any angle out here can't jump over it. Well we have taken this thing and I've set it up. So if you look at this edge of the paddle the region we're looking at is the paddle x direction minus 5. That, uh, that puts up sort of a line along this side. And over on this side, paddle x plus 5. Now I'm using the right paddle, that's why I have the r in here. So the top of the paddle stays the same, bottom of the paddle stays the same. But by making a region of this, paddle x five plus 5 and paddle x minus 5, we create a zone where if the ball ever ends up inside this zone, we're going to change its direction. And that means whether the ball comes from this side or from this side, it'll get the direction will be changed and therefore it'll bounce back on the correct side and it'll look like it's bouncing off of either side of the paddle. And, and that's what we want. So let's take a code, let's take a look at the code. Uh, this and this as well as this and this whole thing will basically be um, parts of an if statement because that surrounds the four sides of a zone basically that we're going to have that ball in. And like I said, occasionally if you get the ball coming in right at the bottom of the paddle, you'll notice it just glides right up along the side for bouncing through. And that can be fixed probably by decreasing these to four rather than five. But you know, I, I wanted to be safe. I wanted to make sure I got the ball bouncing off the paddle the first time. So let's now take a look at the code. All right, our code basically, 
right, let's see where is our code there's our code looks like this let's start again with what variables we're declaring here and if you'll notice I don't require too many here in this case I put down these are basically the ones that are going to be used in the score I've got a score for the left side and a score for the right side and that's what you'll need I have a single iMessage result variable and I have a boolean end and this is how we're going to end the program it, it's it's a unique way of doing it because we're just going to stop the timer and that'll stop the program and that will set at I'll show you where that's set later on here but those are the extra variables we're going to need in order to get this thing to bounce and then also well, we really don't need any to get it to bounce but we need it to end the program and to score it so that's what these four are for let's take a look down here a little further then I think the, the next place I want to show you is the uh, form load and so let's go down to the form load right here and the ones basically I put in the form load are right at this point here these three I've added you know the score and I'm zeroing the score out and I'm starting this B end to be false in other words I don't want the program to be ended and so that's put it false. Now let's go up and take a look at where. Let's see. I got to make sure I'm going to do this right. The bounce. It's down in the bounce one, right here, where the ball is moved. Every time the ball is moved, we've got to check it to see if it's at a paddle now. And we're going to check the score. So. Um, here is the stuff I've added to make sure it bounces off the paddle. Now let's analyze this. I'm just going to check to see if the ball ends up in that region I talked about. So I take a look at the ball and see if it's greater than the boundary I put on the left side of the right paddle. And I want to make sure that it's, I'm going to go jump a place here, and I'm going to make sure that the ball is less than the boundary I put on the right side of the paddle. Now let's see. Now this is the left paddle I'm looking at here. Let's look at the one I actually did. Here we go, down here. The ball greater than the one I placed. Now let's see, this is the minus one, so right paddle, that would be minus, that would be over here on the left side of the right paddle. Okay, so if here's my paddle, I'm looking at the boundary I put over here, right there. Okay, that's that one. And then this one out here, right there, that's the boundary I've put over on this side of the paddle. All right. So what I'm saying is, is it greater than, is it on this side over here where I've got my pencil, is it on this side of this line, and at the same time, is it on this side of this line? So basically, those two parts say, is it between these two lines? That's what we're asking. And we do the same for the top and bottom. We ask, is the ball greater than the Y coordinate at the top of the paddle? OK, that's that one. And the rest of this says, is the ball less than, um, it's off the screen. Oh, heck. Well, anyways, is it less than the Y coordinate at the bottom of the paddle? So I'd better get that on the screen for you so you can see. Let's. Uh, Take this and crunch this down. You don't need to see all that. Uh, a little bit further. A little further. There we go. All right, so let's go look at this again now. So the last part I was telling you about there um, is the ball, talking about the Y right here, is the ball um, this side is the ball right here less than the top of the Y paddle and is the ball I'm sorry this is greater is the ball greater than the bottom remember this whole piece right here is the bottom of the paddle All right. so we're asking it is it between the left and the right boundaries and is it between the top and the bottom and if it is then we want to basically change the direction and all we have to do is multiply by negative one and that will change the direction so if it was positive direction coming in it'll be a negative one now if it's a negative direction coming in it'll be a positive one 
and that simplifies how we have to change the direction. We only need one if statement to do this, but it's a compound if statement, if you'll notice. And of course, we do the same for the other paddle, and that's up here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, basically, um, if it ever gets to, well, let's see, this is where I put the score in the score box. I've created two labels on my form now. And I'm going to actually put the words of the label, like the left score is, right in the label, and then using an ampersand, use the score variable. Now, where do I add to that score variable? Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but afterwards, I ask, you know, at this point, I'm going to set and say, well, you know, do I have a score right here? And is it to a certain point? So in my game, because I add a, a fair amount to the score each time it hits the left side of the table, and that's right up in here, in my game, I'm going to set my top at 100, but you can set it whatever value you think is a, a fair value. And if the left score ever gets to 100, then the left side wins. And if the right score ever gets to 100, the right side wins. When that happens, I pop up a message box to declare the winner. You can do this in a number of ways. You can put a, a label on the screen to pop up and say the winner is and put it in there. I, I like to use message boxes from time to time. And then here's the important part. I say BEND equals true. As soon as the game is ended, I say BEND equals true. And notice, I've changed this down here. This is no longer just a true, because if we set the timer and re-enabled it, the game would continue. So I make the timer reset depending upon this variable right here, the BN variable. If the BN variable is false, which it is most of the time, the not changes it to true, so I have a true here and the game goes on. If the BN variable is true, the not changes it to false, and the game ends right there because the timer is not started again the ball cannot continue so it just sits there on the screen okay, and that's how I end it let's go up quickly and take a look at where I've done the score and I think this one will be finished then I've done the score right in here this is where the ball hits the X side and of course that's over on the left side and if it's ever less than one or zero you can put there. I put a one there because it looked a little better on the bounce but that was just my own personal thing. You could use a zero if you wanted to. But I added to that the fact that it ever manages to hit the left side that means the guy on the left paddle um, didn't stop it. So we should give a score to the guy on the right paddle and that's the right score. Likewise if it, the guy on the right side ever lets it get past him and it hits the right side, that means the score on the left side should be upped. And I upped it by 5, and that means we have about 20, 20 hits on each side to make a game, and that seemed to me like a fairly good game. You can up it by 1 and make the max score down here, right there. You can make that max score be uh, you know, 20 or 10 or whatever you want. You can do it by a bigger number and make this one larger for a final score. It's up to you how you want to do these. All right, so now this is the third and, and final one for the Pong. Uh, you can create a lot of things, like you could create another ball in here to really confuse things and add a whole new scoring system and maybe make one ball more points than another, uh, give the game a whole lot of difficulty. There's a lot of possibilities with this. These are just the basics, but you have the basics that you need, and what I want to see is just these basics. I want to see you be able to put that game together and make it work. Let's go take a look and see what it looks like in motion. I'm going to start it and then I'll drag it back over here to the screen. And it appears to be starting at some super slow speed here. Here we go. And let me drag the screen back over here so you can see it. And there it is bouncing around. And if you watch, there it comes back behind it. It bounced off the back of that one. I'm going to see if I can catch it going up through. Bounced off the back of that one. Of course, I haven't made my left paddle so I can move it yet. I'd love to show you one going up through if I can catch it just right, but that's going to be real tricky. Maybe? Nope. Missed. Just touch it. Just hits the bottom. 
it goes up here and stays real close to the side. Uh, let's see, are we going to make it? Nope. Let me see, I'm going to change the direction of this thing just a touch. All right, let's see, if I can, can I get it? Bounce off the front. There, it bounced off the front just to show you bounce off both sides. I don't know if I'm going to make it to the point where I'm going to be able to show you. Ah, missed. Earlier, I was having it, it was so easy for me to get this thing. I practiced it, trying to get it so I could show you. But it is tricky getting it to go down through the top of the paddle. Come so close on all these. We'll give it just a few more seconds, and I'm, nope, didn't get it. Well, I, you're gonna have to take my word for it. You may see it on yours at some point where it'll actually go down through the paddle. And I won, of course, there's the wind come up for the left side. Because it has 105 score here, you'll notice, and only 75 on this side. But basically, um, and you see the ball has stopped. But basically, that's how it works. And it can get caught. If it comes right in the bottom of the paddle here, it'll just run right up along the side of the paddle so nicely. Okay, if you can make and complete a game like that, that would be wonderful. And call me over to check it when it's ready.